I was born to a Christian family, a church-going family. So church was part of my rhythm since I was baptized at three weeks. And, you know, this is going to sound weird. I loved church. I loved going to church. I... I disliked Kitty Sunday School because I preferred to be in church. And I don't know, I, I loved sacred music. I loved the hymnody and the even the Anglican chants. I really loved that stuff. As an eight-year-old, I was already in the choir and I just, I, it was my, it was my, uh, I'd found my people. <laughs> <laughs> And when I was 12 or 11 or 12, I can't quite remember which, one Saturday or Sunday afternoon, I can't remember which, I sat down and I read through the Gospel of Matthew, and that day changed my life. Hmm. Or actually, it might have just first formed my life. And I couldn't get enough of the scriptures after that. I read through the New Testament several times. I read the Old Testament once. That was a trick, let me tell you, at the age how, of 14. How, you were 14, reading yeah. through the entirety of the Bible. And I just I just kept going uh, uh, for it. And um, I don't know, by the time I was 15, I felt called to devote my life to God's work in some fashion. And I was sure it was going to be pastoral ministry. Um, and I went to college. I went to seminary with that in mind. When I was in seminary, I first began to think, Maybe I should go on for a PhD because I am pretty good at this academic thing. And a lot of my, well, my closest friends in seminary um, really were disappointed that what they were getting in seminary was, was mostly just purely academic study of scripture or church history or theology and not really kind of formative for faith and for ministry and for the church. So I, um, I I just put that away. And by the time I had then finished my PhD, I, I was faced with the option of becoming a, an associate pastor in the United Methodist Church or becoming a New Testament professor at Ashland. And um, my then mentor and boss, because I've been an organist and choir director since I was 18, uh, said, you know, what's going to get you up at six in the morning and get you started working? What do you want to spend 50 hours a week doing? And it became clear um, scripture was my first love. So that's what I've been doing for the last 20, 29 years, full time. I, I'm amazed at the several things in your story. One, being so young, being called in. That reminded me of Craig Keener when I was talking to him. Mm -hmm. He said he was 13 years old and reading Plato. And I was like, I said, I was 13 years old and playing with Plato. Um, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's when he's having these high philosophical conversations. And, and then I remember talking with Van Hooser on the show and he had been a trained pianist. Wow. And that's how actually he was doing an evangelistic work in France. Wow. leading it as a classical pianist so to, to hear guys with musical backgrounds like yourself i didn't know you so you're a trained organist i'm an organist <laughs> not a trained organist you I'm just learned really on your own one, but i mean it's just i grew up it, uh, having access to a, a wonderful four manual pipe organ at this episcopal church and this is how weird i was I would spend my summers between, you know, all my high school years, I'd walk downtown, I'd spend three hours just working at the organ. I had books on organ manual technique, sorry, uh, uh, pedal technique and what have you. And I, I would just spend three hours a morning there. I'd go to the bagel shop, get some salted bagels and head back up the hill for the rest of my day. So I, and I did that all the way you? through college and what have you. And so I, so I might not have the most orthodox technique, but I can play a Bach organ fugue uh, successfully. Did you ever play at baseball games? All right, we're done here. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Great talking to you, Travis.
Good luck with your. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that that was an insult. Good luck with your video <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, no, I've had some good friends that have been organists over the years, um, and uh, it's it's a dying art. It really is. There's very few. Do you have an organ at a church that you're at now? Yes, but in Florida, you know, it's much better to have digital organs and pipe organs. So we had a gorgeous four manual Allen. And I love that thing. But that stupid Hurricane Ian took out our sanctuary and damaged everything. So, so yes, I, I, I was so desperate. I drove up to Lynchburg and brought back a two manual Rogers digital organ last advent so that the next 18 months I wouldn't be on a piano. <laughs> <laughs> well let's um let's get into this book a little bit i mean we're here i knew you were going to say that because you know we've just blown well, off let's just not talk we've about the, off the first just, 19 minutes let's just talk about organs <laughs> let's just, 